Hi everyone, this will be a tutorial of how to model a commercial customer in the Anchor tool. Before watching this tutorial, it's strongly recommended to watch the overview video and the residential tutorial video first. Almost everything in the tool pertaining to residential will also apply to commercial. Please feel free to follow along with your own copy of the tool. First thing I'm going to do is set everything to level 3 by clicking the 3 in the color legend and I'll enter in the name. And clear this out. And the company name. And switch the customer type to commercial. I can skip the rest of this section and come back to it later if I want. Let's get to the next section. Now let's leave the utility at PG&E for now. Um, so this customer has a rate of A10 TOUS. So switch to that. And a local tax of 7.5%. The tool suggests going to rate A6 after installing solar. And A6 is a solar friendly rate, so I'll keep that. <clears throat> now, one key difference between commercial and residential is that commercial customers often have demand charges. One quick way to enter those in is to use the quick rate data entry tool over here. This allows you to enter in both usage and demand information for each month, broken down by time of use period. Just a quick note about this non-time of use KW input here. If you see a demand charge on the bill that doesn't have any time of use indication like peak or off peak, uh, you should put in it here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and enter in sample usage and demand. I'll enter that in for January and get to the next month and enter in some info again. If I skip forward to a summer month, you can see there's an extra field for peak usage. Generally speaking, summer months will have more fields to enter data in than winter months. Okay, so I've finished entering the data. You can pause the video to see what I've entered, or you can use your own values for usage and demand. Just keep in mind that that will yield different results than what you will see for the rest of the video. After entering in this data, this portion here, time of use percentages, and this portion here, demand, is automatically filled out. You might want to do a sanity check on these numbers to make sure the data was entered in correctly. I'll skip ahead to solar system and site variables. I'll leave this to San Francisco. Now my customer's building is a large warehouse with a pitched corrugated metal roof with one side facing west and the other side facing east. The customer wants solar on both sides. So I'll enter in the details accordingly. So the number raised to two. One west, 15 degrees. One east, two degrees. And the building has no shading, so I'll skip that. And I'll scroll down oh, before doing that. I'll set the roof type to be metal corrugated. I'll skip down and go to System Sizing and Specifications and choose my preferred modules and inverters. After picking these, you might want to scroll back up and adjust some of these figures here in System Loss Factors. For example, this inverter model has some protections against module mismatch, so I'll set this to 
and the module model has production tolerances of at least 0%, so I'll set this to 100%. And finally, I know replacing these inverters would cost less than $700 per kilowatt, so I'll adjust this. And scroll it back down again. I know the customer's roof only has enough space for 90 of these modules on each side, so I'll enter that in. And I'll set this uh, rating to SDC. Fix the 90 again. Okay. Now, down in incentives, you can see the federal and state depreciation is factored in. Besides the federal ITC, there are other no other incentives for this project, so we can get to the next section, pricing. Here I'll enter in my dollar per watt, in this case it would be three. Now notice the extra cost here for installing the corrugated, installing on a corrugated metal roof. I'll zero that out because my $3 per watt price already took that into account. All right, let's get into financing. I'll select a business loan and select the terms to 12 years at 7%. Now let's take a look at that on the overview sheet. Let's scroll to this graph here. As you can see, the customer is going to have to pay this much more out of pocket for the first few years. If you'd rather have the customer pay less out of pocket, you can suggest that they re-amortize at year one. So I'll go ahead and do that. As you can see, this flattens out the curve. The downside to this, of course, is that the customer will save less overall because the loan is being paid off later. Now, I'm ready to show off this data for my customers, so I'll scroll back up and click on Print Proposal. Now, I can also do Control P on my keyboard. That's P as in print, and do Print Proposal. For this commercial project, this timeline proposal for commercial is quite useful. So let's take a look at that. As you can see, this is basically a printable version of the cash flow table in the overview sheet. It shows the depreciation and other cash flow items that would be of interest to a commercial customer uh, broken down. All right, let me close this proposal. And let me generate another proposal. This time the loan proposal, which works for both residential and commercial. I'll generate that. All right. If you're satisfied with what you see, you can email or print out this proposal. All right? And that's the end of this tutorial.